Listening to radio is a foreign country. You can hear now a noise probably in the background, which is a toad which is probably mating. I got vivid memories when the toads were first brought to this place. And of course, my dad was an Irishman and uh, he was very, very pleased and he was jubilant about the whole affair. And uh, more so that he said this, and I quote, we've got these bloody grubs by the balls this time and we'll go on to bigger and brighter things. But tragically, we didn't have the grubs by the balls. They are us by the balls. My first memory of the toad was the unusual noise that I heard in the billabong hole across from the house and I did inquire from our pest board officer as to what the noise would be and that was the giant toad. They soon came out on the roads of a night and it did look as though they would really be a terrible menace, that they would take possession of everything. You'd flatten them out with a car and the stench from them would be like a school of mullet coming up the river. They weren't much use at all as far as the cane beetle was concerned, but they did manage to get rid of a lot of stray dogs. The dogs would uh, be attracted to these moving toads and grab them, and of course the buffalo Marino's only protection was his poison sack, and he used to let the dogs have it, and eventually they, quite a few dogs died. He is a 
poses as big a menace as the German army did in World War II. The invasion is on and I appeal to everybody to, wherever you see a toad, have no hesitation running over and killing the monster. An Adelaide man has been fined for his bizarre impersonation of two Queensland identities. Graham Cairns reports. Police told the Port Adelaide Magistrates Court that 32-year-old Philip William Elliott was charged after he was found crouching on the side of a road at Birkenhead in Adelaide. Police say Elliott was jumping out onto the road into the path of oncoming cars. When he was questioned, he told them he was Sir Joe Bjorki Peterson and a cane toad. He's pleaded guilty to the charge of disorderly behaviour and has been fined $50. When we first came up north, we had friends that had two little girls. And uh, these little girls had cane toads as pets. Instead of little dollies, they had these cane toads. They actually had little dresses made up for them, little skirts and beds in a doll's house. They used to dress the toads up and tuck them into their little beds. They used to uh, carry them about, you know, wrapped up in a little baby bunting type of things like you do, little dollies. These girls had names for them. They used to set up little tea parties. And they used to get these toads and scratch their tummy and the things that lay back, obviously enjoying it, and stick their legs up into the air and, and just fall asleep. And they were the most contented, good little, I suppose, alive little dollies that any girl could like, but just so ugly. When I tickle his tummy, he, he really likes it. But if I tickle his feet, he doesn't like it. Sometimes I call him green and sometimes I call him red. Sometimes I call him cane. Almost toad. Sometimes I call him Dairy Queen. One of our ways of amusing ourselves at night time was to uh, feed him with cigarettes. Uh, these buffalo merino toads could really smoke. They loved them. Well, Don, Don Juan uh, says that uh, so, so some of the South American Indians, they um, when they get the, the the mescaline out of the cactus, they say that and have it that you actually start to see the world through the consciousness of the cactus, um, that you start to see what the world looks like from the eyes of the cactus. And your toad's the same. I first found out about the uh, use of the toxins from the cane toad back in the 1970s when I was stationed here as an investigating detective. Uh, we found that uh, in uh, places like the hippie communes around Cedar Bay and near Cairns, when uh, uh, heroin and other drugs weren't freely available, the next best alternative was to go out and get a cane toad and kill it boil it down into a solution for 10 minutes, a little bit of water in it, and drink the residue. The effect that uh, I found out that it had on them, from what I've been told, was that they had fantastic uh, colour hallucinations. Uh, it uh, warped their sense of time, and it also affected their mental capacities. Um, and uh, you use little use a little quantity at first, then larger little bit first. Uh, I didn't didn't like it that much. It's difficult to go anywhere in Queensland without coming across references to or um, idolatry concerned with the cane toad because they are they are ubiquitous. They're they're absolutely everywhere. People are brought up with them. Hello. Yes, John. Is this a tall toad story? That's right. I was in Gordon Bay when they first released the cane toad. Tell me about your recollections of, well, of those when days. when they first released John. Yes. Now, you know what a kerosene tin is like. A yes. Dropped straight in, they wouldn't go into a kerosene tin. They would have eaten a cat. That's right. They were that massive that if you put them on a big square mouse shovel, you couldn't lift them. Oh. That is true as I stand here. You're not pulling my leg. I am not. I can remember if it was yesterday. There are still quite a large number of the toads around but not as big as they used to be. Uh, but I still love the animal and they give me a lot of enjoyment. I definitely think they're a harmless animal and nobody's got any right to fear about them. On 
not sure whether I would call them pets exactly, but uh, they're mates, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> we often see them mating right here in front of us on the lawn. That's the hard question to think of them as friends. They're just friends. Friends, I suppose, because they, uh, they're around the place. You get used to them, you look for them. Uh, they know they're, they're singing, they're calling. It's, a, it's not only a pleasant noise, it's a friendly noise. And I love it. You're listening to Radio is a Foreign Country.